been down a path of pain. Made of mountain choosing. Watch my youth slip away, oblivious of what I was losing. I've seen so many disappear, holes in space once occupied. Far too isolate the tears of loneliness falling from my eyes. Time is just a rush of real life. While the path within its place, and all of us within. Come and full circle Coming full circle, like the beautiful Quentin Blue. And I invite you to contemplate um, coming full circle, how that relates to your own life and also to the ancestors and relatives in your life. I'm going to invite the audience now to turn off your video so you can fully take in and enjoy the rest of our show. And then we'll come back on video, all of us together in community at the end of our performances. And where's Ray Ray? <laughs> Are you there, Ray Ray? There's Ray Ray. I remember 
my mother's uh, tales of bar fights and uh, gangsterism. I remember my mom singing to me whenever I cry. Richie, you're on mute. We'd love to hear your lovely voice. I remember that I never saw my mother cry. I remember holding the hand of my Jewish mother, Evelyn, as she would walk down the streets of Brooklyn with me, handing out peanut butter sandwiches and, and chocolate chip cookies to people who were homeless. I remember my cousin Chucky trying to swim and he didn't make it. I remember my grandma experiencing racism. I remember hearing stories about my father during the depression as a boy wanting a guitar and never getting one. I remember first hearing about my older brother's suicide. I remember going to, to the fields to work with my grandmother, picking tomatoes. I remember my parents didn't tell us that my little sister Destiny died. I remember my first day of school. I remember my father's brokenness from his own abuse and the way he endlessly watched TV to numb the pain. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. My name is Los Dini, and my piece is called Relevant Shakespeare. <clears throat> I played Malcolm in Macbeth when I was in San Quentin. And how to develop the character and how to develop the lines, I had to figure out. So I'm going to take you in the process, through the process, of how I took my experience, my memories, and put it into the character. When I shall tread upon the tyrant's head or wear it on my sword, yet poor country shall have no more vices than it had before more suffering and more sudry ways than ever by him that shall succeed. What does this mean? It is myself, I mean, in whom I know all the particulars of vice so grafted that when they shall be opened, black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow. And the poor state esteem him as a lamb being compared with my confineless arms. Black Macbeth will seem as pure as snow. And the poor state esteem him as a lamb being compared with my confineless arms. Reading that line reminds me of how I grew up with my stepfather. You know, the only way to get respect is fear. <laughs> Why are you crying? What, you're being held at gunpoint? 
Well, you little sissy. Get over it. Quit crying. This is power. This is how you do it. Fear is power. You got to go take it. You got to do everything you can to make everybody bow down to you. What I took from this was that I had to be worse than my stepfather. So I waited for the day that I could tread on him, that I could wear his head on my sword. <laughs> and then when people would look at him, they'd say, he was a saint compared to the stepson he raised. That's what I poured into Malcolm. So when he says that, when he, when I say that, I'm taking it from a place of where I remember. Of a relative who treated me in such a way. But there's more. That I learned. As I went through life. But there's no bottom none. In my voluptuousness. In my voluptuousness. Your wives, your daughters, your matrons, and your maids could not fill up the cistern of my lust and my desire. All content impediments would overbear that did oppose my will. You know, Carlos, you got to have as much sex as possible. What are you, a sissy? What are you, gay? Nah, you got to have as many women as possible, and they got to pay for it. You got to conquer everything. That's the message I got from the world and from my peers and from my step. Was it in order to be? A man in this world, I had to see everything as a conquest, see every woman, every sexual encounter as a conquest, and yet it would be unfulfilling. So I put that in Malcolm. But there were other voices. There were other things inside of me that I had to also open up. Let me show you. <laughs> the taints and blames I laid upon myself for strangers to my nature, for I am yet Unknown to woman. Never was forsworn. Scarcely coveted what was my own. At no time broke my faith. Would not betray the devil to his fellows and delight. No less in truth than my life. My first false speaking was this. Paul myself. This is where I hear the voices of mis tias, mi bisabuelita, mi abuelita. Mijo, you're kind. You're generous. Remember, that's where you come from. You don't take advantage. You help those that are in need. You help those who cannot help themselves. I had to get back to who I was as Malcolm had to get back to who he was. 
I was not a tyrant. I was not raised to be inhuman. I was raised to be human by these women who poured their life into me. And that's what I choose today. So when I played Malcolm, when I put this character in my body, those are the things that I drew from. One telling me, the world telling me, the, the hurt telling me that I needed to hurt. But today, as Malcolm, when he listened to McDuff, he realized that that's not me. That's not my authentic self. That's not my first human identity. And that's how I made this character relevant. And that's how come Shakespeare's relevant, because I believe that we all deal with these arguments, not only within ourselves, but with the people who taught us. So that to me is how I make Shakespeare relevant. Thank you. Mm. The audience. Very well. Greetings, everyone. The name is Ray Ray. Pleased to meet you. And I'm going to be talking about ancestry relationships. And while, excuse me, hold that thought. Mm. Audience. Interesting. Very well. Greetings, everyone. My name's Ray Ray, and I'm going to be speaking about ancestry relationships. And deja vu. I see you, God. But what are you trying to show me? I hear deja vu is like you've been there before. In a sense, deja vu is like you restarting from your last checkpoint. Huh. I remember my OG partner, Bobby, telling me, oh, the... <laughs> youngster, deja vu is simply looking through your ancestors' eyes. Always. Huh. Interesting. Looking through our ancestors' eyes, I can't imagine looking through my great great grandma's eyes. Imagine the pain and suffering she'd been through experiencing the Jim Crow days. God. What is deja vu? I mean, there's that saying YOLO, you know, you only live once. But how can that be when we experiencing deja vu? Wouldn't that mean we lived before? Huh. <laughs> I remember Carlos Los Dini saying deja vu for him is simply he's on the right track. Now, God, what if, and this is what if, it's not a fact, what if, what if, what if deja vu simply means we are all in a race, bear with me, and in that race, we are all on the right track. Now, experiencing deja vu is simply experiencing our learning experience. Huh. And at the end of our race, at the end of our finish line, 
we enter eternity. Yes. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Well, damn, I'm, I'm done. Well, if it's that simple, then deuces. And I want to welcome Richie Morris. Richie, wherever you are, um, I invite you to come. Uh, it on says uh, the host has stopped my your video. Okay. Hi. My name is Richard Morris. Um, I spent about five and a half years, six years involved with Marin Shakespeare at San Quentin. One of the most profound events in my life. Uh, this piece that, that you're going to see is a semi-fictional depiction of my grandfather speaking from the past into the present and is a witness to the disconnect of the present to the past. I hope you enjoy. If I consider the past, am I moving into the future against my will? What in the Sam Hill? What in the world are you chattering on about, grandson? I'm the existential man. I am, but I am not the I am. And I wonder about this disconnection. My name is William Everett Langley. I was born in 1852 in a cabin my pa built and I was a strapping lad from the first. Missouri was a frontier in those days, untamed. I learned from an early age to rise early, do the chores, slop the hogs, feed the chickens, harness a mule, get the plow ready for the field. Every breath, a single universe beyond the mundane physicality we humans are tasked to bear shy of God's mantle and pining for Eden. I knew the James boys. I liked Frank more than I ever did Jesse. Dingus had a mean streak. My mama would send me to Frank and Jesse's mom, Miss Zarelda, at times when our cow wasn't given milk. I stand in a space as old as time itself and I'm made to wonder how many others have occupied it in the past. In our little home, there was my pa Joseph, my ma Sarah, my older brother Millard, and my baby sister Rue. I had another sister Cora, but the fever took her in her fifth year. I do not propose to understand the nature of any war, whether it be external or internal. Even as a young boy, I remember that I had the inkling that things around me weren't quite right. I heard my grandpa and pa talking in front of the fireplace as they smoked. The smell of the pipe tobacco filled my senses. Grandpa swore there was a real bad war coming, but I was just a talk then, barely able to cipher what was being said. And the desperation becomes my fuel pulling my soul toward a beckoning that is and isn't. Grandson, what in tarnation does that mean? It either is or it isn't. You can't have it both ways now. Every fall, my pa would sell one of the summer hogs we'd 
fattened up and we'd all load up in the wagon and go to town in Centerville. Now my brother and sister and me, we ran wild and barefoot when the summer came, but right after every harvest in the fall, Pa and Ma would take us into town for a brand new pair of shoes. It gets cold in Missouri in the winter. Ain't no barefoot then. I am measured by time. Just before the fighting in the real war started, it got plenty hot up in the Kansas border. The slavery issue was hard on everyone's lips, it seemed, whether you saw it in terms of yay or nay. My pa lost a cousin to a Yankee sympathizer. He left and was gone for three days, though my ma begged him not to go. Pa went, and when he came back, they never spoke a word about it again. It was plain then, and I do realize now I was measured by time. I am measured by time. I saw my first bull whipping of a man just before Christmas of that year. I wanted to turn my eyes away, but Paul made me look. He said to me, form your opinion, son. We then turned away. Spoken words that float lazily upon expectations too raw to ever be real. Grandson, have you been smoking that loco weed again? My old ears ain't got one inkling as to what you're saying. Now the next year, my pa sold the summer hog and two days later, the Confederate Brigade came to our farm. I listened as a barrel-chested major by the name of Tate told my pa that he was needed among the boys. I saw some familiar faces among the troops. There were the Gilmore twins, Ollie Griffin, and even the good Reverend Snipes. Many of these familiar faces I would never see again. Among these, my pa and my brother. And again, the cost of spending a moment which has been hung in perpetuity, actualization pending. I turned nine that summer. Just a boy now bearing the weight of a man. Grandpa, Ma, and little sister helped with the crops and the cows and the chickens. A band of wild Comanche came to the farm that fall. They were hungry. Ma fed them. If I consider the present while living in the past, will I be moved into the future against my will? Grandson, I just don't understand you at all. I dream of being a star. I dream of a family of my own. I dream of finding true love. I dream of embracing and making peace with all parts of myself and my life experience. I dream of conflict in all my relationships. I dream of the world seen through love and not through color. I dream of a world seen through love and not color. I dream of laughing with people from all over the world. I dream of one day being able to exhale. I dream of love and harmony. I dream of a world where people appreciate peace. I dream of living more connected to nature, walking barefoot and talking to the trees and listening. I dream. I dream. I dream. I dream.
And that concludes our show. Thank you, everyone. And want to invite the audience now. Thank you to Los Dini, Ray Ray, Richie. Beautiful work. Yes, I invite the audience to come on video and just share your appreciation for our performers with whatever thank feels you. genuine to you. Thank you. And thank you all for, for being here with us. And thank you also to Leslie and Bob Courier. Oh, yeah. Abby Campbell and all of Marin Shakespeare, all of you who have made this work possible through the years. So I want to put a shout out to you all. And um, now we, uh, we're we going to flip the script here. <laughs> uh, we have some questions for you, audience. Um, of course, if you want to write anything in the chat, something you were touched by or taking away from uh, the performances tonight, feel free to write that in the chat. But I'm going to see if Lostini, Ray Ray, or Richie want to ask a question of the audience now. I have a question. Like, what, what is one of your fondest memories or happiest memories of your elders? One of your elders or many, I don't know. Mm. Not everybody at once, please. <laughs> yeah. It's subtle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember my grandmother um, taking me to Florida. Um, and I had her all to myself. Wow. That's a good moment. Yeah. I wanted to say hello to you, Carlos. I don't know whether you remember me. I remember you, Candace. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray Ray, I don't know whether you remember me, but I remember both of you very well. And it's so good to see you. Thank you. Too. Don't remember me, huh? I don't remember you. <laughs> if I admit you, I for sure would have remembered you. Now yeah. I remember you. Well, Mark Twain <laughs> said this, strangers are just friends I haven't met yet, you know? So mm -hmm. welcome. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, experiencing this performance, how are you guys going to see your elders now? You know, like their learning experience, how are you going to learn from them during their their time and their experience through life. Mm. Don't be shy. Sure. I just wanted to say that um, uh, it's funny because I am, I guess I would be considered an elder, although I still don't feel like an elder. So it's hard to be on the side of, uh oh, I'm supposed to be the wise one. But I guess for me, being an elder means trying as hard as I can to tell myself the truth and to tell it to other people too, even if it's not nice. Beautiful. And I, loved, I loved your performance. So, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Is anybody else going to answer for Ray Ray or should I just go ahead and go or? Okay. I can answer that seeing the performance, um, I feel like it um, gave, even though I don't know the answers, but it it gave the lives of my elders more depth. You know, there's way more to their story than I know. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. My question is this. <clears throat> Considering that we live in a time when so much of the past seems to be either being revised or literally erased, 
how do we connect to uh, the the painfulness of the past right with a measure of peace today and understanding that, you know what, the past is a lesson for us to not go back and repeat the same mistakes that were made by our elders, you know? So my question is this, how do we not throw the baby out with the bathwater, I guess is what I'm asking, you know, in terms of our path. Because <laughs> Joshua, you hit it right on the nose. Our ancestors, got they, they've got a depth and they've got a story to tell and we are their voice right now. Mm. 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 I just want to tell you, I'm on my husband's computer. He's Joshua, but oh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm you so had sweet. no way of knowing. But when I yeah. signed in with mine, I was on. I was. I was a Zoom manager on another thing, so I had to get out and get on on this. So it's fine. But I just wanted to explain that actually, I'm not Joshua. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Any answers? Did anybody understand the question? <laughs> okay, so I have like, do you guys have any questions for us or for you know? Because um, we're willing to have a dialogue, you know, we want the dialogue. So if you guys have any questions for us about how we came up with our piece or how um any any of those types of questions, just feel free to ask, please. We got Gretchen. time. People. Sure. Gretchen. Yeah, I love your pieces, and I would love to know how you generated them. Um, what was the process? Um, how long you've been engaging with the work for your particular piece? And also how you work in collaboration with each other, because clearly you do. So it's a broad question for any of you who would like to answer. I was completely taken by the performances. Thanks. Uh, can I answer that? Um, no. <laughs> I'll see you later. Uh, 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 we'll talk later. Fortunately, you know, what we what's been proper for us, what we've been offered is a safety net by by Shakespeare, by Leslie, by Soraya, by the other folks that are mm -hmm. in Marine Shakespeare, right? So that even when we fall on our face, we get caught. Um, it's as far as the piece itself that I created, it was created off of an authentic living human being that was born in the 1850s, 110 years before I was born. And I would never have known him had I not the stories about his life had I not seen his obituary with my own eyes and seen the things that he went through when there was kind of an osmosis that went on right there when I read the thing you know it directly connected me to somebody that is pertinent William Langley you know he's, he's, he remains pertinent to me these days you know because of what it is that he offered he was not only my father's grandfather, right? He was an American hero to me, you know? And he lived in a time where people absolutely had no filters in terms of their uh, ability to love or hate. They just wanted to survive. Mm. Mm. Hope that answers that. <laughs> that's great. I'd love to hear any. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, William. Um, I'd like to hear others, if you'd like to share. Well, I'll say this, that, uh, you know, we start out um, trying to develop a theme. And this theme was like ancestry. And what does it look like? And how does it influence us? Or how do we view it? And ancestry can be either a thousand year off or, you know, the people who went right before us and like our parents, grandparents and stuff. So that's kind of where I took it. Uh, I really thought about how my near ancestors had, you know, even my stepfather is an ancestor of mine. And I had to really think about how that affected me and how I walked in life. And then I had to think about the wisdom of, you know, my, the, you know, my grandmother, my great grandmother and my my aunties, you know, how did they affect my life? 
so I weren't very near to me. Um, and, you know, that is how I develop a, a character in Shakespeare is, is I take those learned experiences and I try to bring them to the character I'm in to kind of relate to the human experience that has gone through all of um, time because Shakespeare writes of the human experience. And he took his ideas from somebody else, from an ancestor of his, or from writers that were ancestral. You know, so I just really wanted to, to like show people that um, the process and how I make that relative, you know, through my relatives. And uh, how we work together is we sit down and you know, we we discuss our pieces, and I thank Soraya and, and and Richard and Ray Ray for you know helping me understand the different levels I needed to get to, or the different perspectives and stuff. Because they you know they came with a lot of great advice that I sat back and I go, okay, I can use that. So really, my piece was developed through all of the ensemble here. And it was a great experience. We, we've been doing this for, what, three months now? And it's just been, you know, every time we meet, we go over it, we, we just hone it in some. And we, we, we respect each other and we hear each other. And I think that's one of the most important parts is, you know, none of us are the show. We're all the show. So that's really what's enjoyable too. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, for me, was I would say like what Carlos was saying is like mainly about like dedication and like being there for each other, you know, and not setting each other up for failure because like if they see something that I don't see, they are gonna tell me and like, hey, Rary, like try this. Count on that. <laughs> Before you try that, right? As similar to my piece, my piece, I feel like it was more, it was harder, more harder for me because I didn't grow up with a lot of elders in my family. It was mainly like a lot of young, but I was more towards like my grandma and I learned a lot of my wisdom from her. Mm. And she was just telling me like her life story. And a lot of like, especially in today's society and today's generation, Right. A lot of young people forgot where like they came from their culture. Like what if like, you know, what if we was kings in Africa or, you know, queens in Mexico and like all that type of stuff, you know, and where I like stand on that. I'm just like, well, damn, I didn't see it as that because I was too busy, you know, either chilling, hanging out with my friends or, you know, going to school. And it's just doing this piece was like maybe an eye opener for me because it let me go in depth of like deja vu and like the different aspects of deja vu. And I read it from like a biblical point where it's to uh, like, why do we have deja vu, you know? And it's like, I know like we live before, but then it's just like that ongoing, like what Carlos taught me. And it's like, I'm telling you, it was like an eye opener it was crazy because like I'm literally like on the point of like okay deja vu is this like it's like you've been there before and Carlos just came up with this simple answer and was just like he was like man deja vu for me is like a learning experience and it's just like every time we have deja vu in our life it's a learning experience you know and it's just like okay how can we stop this from happening or how can we better this you know and so it's like it allowed me to go deep within myself and that's it thank you you're thank welcome you. yeah. are there any other questions yes hi i'm rose i'm uh um in new orleans and i'm just so blown away um uh, i it, there was so many strands of humanity in this whole idea of the deja vu and and what are the connections to our past? I loved showing like, you know, the stepfather and the mother and the, and the women and the grandmothers and, 
And then, um, I mean, just all of these different techniques you will use to really bring, you know, this whole thing of power and love and how those connections, it was really profound to me, I've got to tell you. Uh, how do you get it out there? How do you put this in schools? How do we get people to start using this? How do we take it to other correctional places? I like the way you, you know? think. <laughs> well, yeah. if I may say, uh, everything begins with capital. The reality is we live in a, a time and place where um, funding is necessary. That's just the reality of it. You know, we'd like for it to be a, a more... Uh, you know, maybe barter system or a different system, but we live in the United States where it just isn't like that. Mm. And so one of the things that I struggle with is I would love to be able to move in a way where I could take this to my community, you know, uh, the, the Chicano community, the indigenous community, but I have to work. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to do these things. It's It's the manner of where we live and how we live. So I would say, you know, one of the things is is making sure the funding it gets where it Whoa. needs to be for people to be able to do that. It's 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 a weird thing to uh, speak of of uh, uh, capital money mm -hmm. with people because it's just very um, uncouth, <laughs> right? You know, I mean, that's what we've been taught. Like, you don't ask, mm -hmm. for yes, you don't so look true. for certain things. Mm -hmm. And yet we see that there is a fence or a gate where the people who actually have the power and the capital make these rules so that we cannot barter or figure out a way to get that in the in the hands of people who need it. Yeah. So um, I would say, how do we get this in correctional facilities? We'll find the people that will be most effective in the correctional facilities to um, get them the, 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 sustain, the sustainability to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want this in schools, you find the person that would be most effectual mm -hmm. and you sustain them in it. See, that, mm -hmm. that's the thing is... is um, it's a very hard thing to talk about funding mm -hmm. because it's it's not greed. It's a necessity. Oh, yeah. To live and to eat and to do these things. But I'll tell you my story. I I work construction five days a week um, mm -hmm. and I cannot afford because I live on a minimum wage to really volunteer my time yeah. in a way that would help those near me, but yet I still do, you know, I still help my brothers that are in the mm -hmm. joint, you know, I still find ways to do this because it is needful and it is something that is, that is worth. Well, mm -hmm. I think there's something like you're recording this, you know, wouldn't it be amazing if this could be made available to people to buy the rights to listen to it and have a community <laughs> event and have a discussion? Like, how does this relate to our lives, you know? Rose, yeah. if I may, if I may. <laughs> yeah. Um, our band, our band, Quentin Blue, was blessed to go back a couple of months ago, right? Uh, we had to go back. Back in, we were we're in the process of of doing a documentary right, right now. A band oh, getting cool. out, reforming, I, it they formed in yeah. And I saw the impact on the on the brothers on the yard that knew us that we left, yeah. and they're still there. I saw that, and the opportunity to inspire others with what I'm blessed with, what what Los is blessed with, what Ray Ray's blessed with, is huge. Because what it lets them know, mm -hmm. right, is there's a community out here that is ready to embrace mm -hmm. them if they'll come out and do the, the, the do, just do the right thing, you know, just do the right thing and stay connected to Shakespeare, stay connected to, for instance, Susie Tanner and, and the Workers Project down here, right? Mm -hmm. th th this is important stuff because we're getting to take this back into them. And let them know that you know what you're not just dropping off into a big hole when you step right. out of this gate. 
Yeah. You know, that there are people sides. out here that are connected to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just and you, your thing with your grandfather. I mean, it just yeah. it, it inspires you to want to know what's what was my, you know, it, oh, it yeah. inspires you to that curiosity. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah, Isn't that I mean, neat? The cool. past never stops. The never the past never stops. We as it's, it's a, a progeny carry it with us. Right. And I do believe that it deserves to be respected, even for its ugliness, the ugliness that was there. You yeah, know? but look at the stories you've all told tonight. Look at the beauty that you yeah. created out of what was despair and, and darkness and whatever you want, you know, out of that yeah. suffering came gold, you know. This, this is our medicine. Mm-hmm. Our art is our mm-hmm. medicine. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it gives us an opportunity to vin- I had somebody one time, a teacher in, in uh, New Folsom Level 4, that that made the statement that the people that are in prison, whether female or male, are there because they're frustrated artists. Yeah. I found that so profound uh-huh. that it's like one of those things that uh-huh. stuck to me like Velcro. Mm-hmm. And it was our actually a part of, of me beginning to wake up out of 17 years of just my first 17 years in prison, just mm-hmm. acting like a fool. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. So you inspire us as well. So know that, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's so important to hear these other voices. That's there's just so much like I, th- I think whoever used the word the disconnect, you know, that that uh, happens within ourselves, within our communities, within regions, yeah, all of that. It's globally. really prevalent. It's prevalent mm-hmm. these days, you know. Mm-hmm. The whole world's in trauma. You know, we need to listen and talk about things that are philosophical and important and vulnerable. Well, considering you know? that we're all related, yeah, I think we should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, please cry, you know, do that. Say that yeah. message. That's powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. Ray, Ray. <laughs> Any other questions? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> I know somebody. I have, a, I have a question for you, Richie. Where are you? Hold on. Zoe. Hold on. Hi, Zoe. Hey. Good to see your face, and it's great to see you uh, doing some good, good creative work, like I like I know you to to do. And I, I my question actually is, I know I know that you're a writer, and you're also an actor, and 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 you write, you know, this um, this kind of work like you did tonight. And I'm just curious, like how how does um how do those different modes affect you? You know, like I, it was interesting watching you like be in the, in the role of, of your great grandfather, like, um, physically. And that's different. That's a different process than writing, you know, if you'd written it. And I was just curious, like, do you have any reflection on, on the different, you know, the different forms of, of creative expression and how they, how they play out for you. And you're, all, author, all, so you got, you got a lot of, you got a lot of things to compare. They're all viable. First and foremost, they're all viable, whether it's, it's, uh, uh, my writing a story or or singing a song that I've written or or being directed by uh, Miss Leslie or uh, uh, Miss Soraya, right? Um, it's just an issue of being able to take that thing that's down in the freaking she, you know what I mean? It's down in the gut and opening it up and letting the world see the humanity in it, you know? So my friends, similar, my band they, all, they all feel similar to you? Like, is a similar kind of process? Uh, uh, different kinds of aspirins, different kinds of medicines, but the same goal, right, okay. is to make sure that, that I stay connected, like you said, to not only my community, but to the people that are still behind the wall that don't have this kind of opportunity Right. Oh, there's a lot of people in a level fours that never get an opportunity, Leslie, to do or survive what we did in Shakespeare. They never get that opportunity. And I'm telling you the truth. It shifted my complete perspective, whether being in the in the, the writing class with you. Right. Or or being in Shakespeare or being in the veterans group. Right. It is that interconnection with other human beings that come from so diverse, right? So much diversity that, you know what? It just made me realize that, you know what? All this bitterness, all this crap that I carried around all these years was useless. 
and I began to chuck it off. And in some sense, I'm still chucking it off. So that's what the art does for me. Now, my ability to differentiate between them, I see them all as different tools in the in the in the tool belt. I really do, you know, and I appreciate the opportunity to practice them when given, you know. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you changed your hair too <laughs> didn't you who else get them right come on come on <laughs> i just want to just say thank you zoe for being here nice yeah you're the bomb here and um i know you didn't ask me that question but um I believe that all of the arts are like these different access points, kind of like the five fingers on our hand. Like, you know, they all, like, all right. However many we each have, but you know, like some people's music takes us into the inner world. Sometimes it's writing, sometimes it's theater, sometimes it's a mixture, visual art, but it all kind of, kind of goes into the coalesces. Yeah. So just wanted to put in my two cents worth, but. That was Ray, you were story. saying, you were saying. <laughs> Waiting. Don't be shy. I see you down there. Come on, I know you got a question you want to ask. Let's That's go. A question from Abby. Abby Campbell. Hey. Our Hi, Abby. Marketing director. Hi, guys. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thank you. Stupendous work. Um, but I'd love to know just what your favorite part of this process was, what you found comforting and healing and challenging. Ray? Uh, for me was, the best part was reuniting with, you know, the old crew, Richie, Carlos, Soraya, and Leslie and all them. Uh, <laughs> I'd say the most hardest one was, you know, just, just completing this this project, especially you know my my piece, and it's just like it's a learning experience for me, you know. And it's just like I just wish like I'm on the same page with Rose, you know, that what she was talking about about teaching this to other like schools and stuff because nowadays like school is getting is getting very you know. It's, pointless you know mm. uh i feel that we're i me personally i don't believe we should pay to go to school mm. and i feel like that's the reason why a lot of individuals are not going to school you know and it's just this is something like i need it and like if i didn't have this you know if i would have this before i went to prison i believe i would never came to prison mm. you know? And it's just like, I feel like, you know, we need to spread this more to like SoCal, you know, like Los Angeles, San Bernardino, Corona, all that type of stuff where it's like- Compton, Compton. Compton, yeah, all that, you know. New it's, Orleans. <laughs> New Orleans, yeah, who that yeah. nation, baby? Saints, let's go. Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, this is about, this is like, that's like, you mean about it, you know, and just, you know, actually learn and teach something. Instead, it's teaching like hate. You know, that's what I feel like is that's all about. Mm. It's a lot of hate going on. Mm. Well, we got to learn how to hate hate. Yeah. Mm. I love that. Yeah, it's easy to get addicted to the charge of something like that. And that's why expressing this and putting it into this poetry of equivalences of, of the Shakespeare and the way you weave it in is so also i mean you know it's like you're not intimidated by it you're utilizing it you're bringing in that heritage of old wisdom you know wherever it's from mm. so that's also very inspiring i think for people to see everywhere we're all old souls yeah lostini or richie did you want to answer that question from abby I'm, I'm going to ask her to repeat the question. Sure. Uh, just what your your favorite part of this process was or what you found most healing or enriching or challenging, anything at all. 
I have to agree with Ray, which is kind of an anomaly, but I'm going to do this anyway, uh, <laughs> is that getting to come back to this point where I get to look into uh, the faces of my mentors, my senseis, you know what I mean? The queen bee, uh, and Soraya, my sensei, my friend Ray, my brother Ray, and, and my brother Los Dini, getting to participate with them in this is very important to me. Recovery doesn't stop when we get out of prison. It doesn't stop, you know. Um, if anything, it actually intensifies because of the things that we now take on, right? And the opportunity to, my, with my bandmates, uh, my my uh, my piano player holding up the cue cards so I get the lines right, uh, 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 Dwight, uh, uh, my bandmate, doing the part of me as I'm talking to my grandson, right? This is... This is a participation that, that speaks to me of the community that we came out of here. And I'm not preaching. We came out of here with the absolute plan to have a positive impact where we are, you mm -hmm. know, in the here and now. But the opportunity to do this in conjunction with the past and the things that have happened in the past and be as blatantly honest about them as we can be, right, without creating harm, to me is huge. Because we're not only healing ourselves in this, right? We're allowing that healing to spill over into the community, which is you, you know, and you're important. You're very important to us. And that's all I got to say. Likewise. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'd like to thank everybody for um, coming tonight. I'd love to thank um, Soraya for holding this space and the fabulous performers for your wisdom and vulnerability and skill mm. and star quality. I loved hearing about your dreams and I hope they all come true and I hope everyone else's dreams come true as well. Um, this recording will be available on YouTube so we're not going to sell it. We're just going to, you know, make it free to anyone who'd like to see it, along with many other recordings um, by the Returned Citizens Theater Troupe. That is so and, cool. And from performances inside of prisons. And stay tuned because um, we believe that our new Center for Performing Arts, Education and Social Justice will be able to officially open in April. And we are um excited yeah. to invite you all to come see some live return citizens theater troupe performances in the new center when it opens it is a beautiful theater mm -hmm. so again you guys are amazing yeah. you're incredible thank you everybody for coming to be a part of this and for your participation we love you all thank you thank, thank you. you thank you it was fun great bravo Bye-bye. So Bye-bye. 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 Joey! Come on. Hi, Candice. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>